Welcome back to my Let's Play for Pokemon Crystal, my Mono Bug Run. And it's time to take on Whitney in her normal gym. And this is probably going to prove to be a pain in my backside, but... What you gonna do about it, man? <sighs> I'm probably gonna have to fear the cow tonight. <sighs> Good old Militang's probably gonna be doing a heck of a lot of rolling out. I got a plan, though, unlike the flying run where it was turned to drugs, we're gonna be relying on teamwork here to try and carry us through. Which has its ups and downs. I mean, we have the team, we have the talent, but strategies like that are always risky because one critical hit or something or a move not working as well as you need it to and all of a sudden you are screwed so yeah definitely a bit more um risky than what I went with from the flying run because you know with the X attacks X defense it's very um reliable at least you know you're gonna get the X attacks X defense off I mean the only real threat there was um Clefairy because you never know what's gonna do um Thankfully, the worst thing it dropped on me was Hydro Pump, so I was able to just res resist it relatively okay. I mean, yeah, it's a powerful technique, but a level 18 Clefairy doesn't exactly have the most damaging of special attack stats, thankfully. So I was able to shrug it off relatively well. My re real fear is it's going to drop Blizzard or Ice Beam or Thunder or Thunderbolt or something, you know, and just shred my Pidgey while I was powering it up. Um, I guess I could have tried sand attacking it in this submission, but I didn't want to go that route because it'd take up even more turns. And I already knew I was going to be dropping at least six or seven on um, just powering up in advance to get ready for mill tank. Because I need those X def attacks, X defense to be able to tank its hits and then hit hard enough to knock it out before Rollout just rolled all over me. Um, we have our, We do have our options here. I'm not sure... They're the best options, but we have them. I wish Wormageddon had a few more levels, but... I don't feel like f grinding on them right now. I spent enough time grinding in this game looking for Heracross. Like I brought up in the um, flying run. It was a nightmare. And I never even found a Heracross, because... All the trees, because of the random nature of them, through the um, trainer ID setup... Means none of the trees are special. At least for me in the areas where I can get them, so... No hair cross yet. Can't do that, so I can um, surf towards Mahogany Town. So yeah, I probably won't have it until about the halfway point in this run, or a bit past it. Um, sometimes, if you count the post-game content or not, when you're um, talking about this game, I know a lot of people usually include it. I usually consider it extra stuff and don't think about it too much. So yeah. I won't have Heracross for quite a while, which is disappointing, because it would have been a real bright spot to have. After all, Heracross is pretty useful with its fighting moves. But whatever, I mean, if we have to rely on Monarch to carry us for a bit longer than we will, though, I don't think Monarch's going to work out as well here as it does in, say, um, Gen 1 or its remake. But I suppose that's not a surprise. Monarch's not really a... Bug Pokemon you want to rely on. Its stats just aren't good enough. If you're relying on the Butterfree to save your butt, you're um, relying on the wrong Pokemon. Because <sighs> that whole um, stat problem just starts to rear its head at the higher levels. It really does. Well, let's take on Snubble. Then we'll deal with the Jigglypuffs, then head back to the Pokemon Center to do some healing, because I gotta be at full health for I'm taking on Miltank. Anything less, and I already know I'm gonna lose by default. <sighs> okay, let's do this. Come on, Snubble. Let's go. Can't stand particularly fond of the Bulldog Pokemon. Even when, it, even when it evolves, it's still not that intimidating. It really isn't. Of all the new Pokemon they introduced, this is one I definitely could have done without. And I really wouldn't have minded. Like, I can understand Meryl, or Pikachu as they used to call it back then. After all, it could be the new um, Pikachu-like mascot, you know, for Gen 2. Because if you like having mascots, it should be a theme of them being mice, right? I mean, electric mouse, water mouse... 
And if they took off, I guess we could have like a fire mouse or something. Hmm. What would you call that though? A flare chew? Yeah, I shoot fire breath. Fear the chew. But no. Instead, we got, you know, other Pokemon. They sort of dropped anyone else to be the mascot for all, because I guess they're like, Pikachu just sort of sticks. Mostly because the anime, I'm sure, because it's the iconic Pokemon that Ash has, because he never gets rid of it. Though, that Pikachu always seems to get de-leveled every time Ash goes to a new area. Like, you think at this point it'd be like level 100 and just own most gym leaders by itself. And said, no, we can be beaten up by, like, a level 5 Snivy. So, yeah. Ash, what are you doing to your Pikachu? Like, you have a de-leveling gun or something you hit it with? You're like, sorry, Pikachu, but you gotta go back to level 5. It's, we gotta be fair to the rest of the trainers in this area. Yeah, I feel sorry for Pikachu if that's the case. It tries so hard, and keeps getting de-leveled. No wonder Ash can't win tournaments, his Pokémon aren't high enough level, man. Then again, I'm not sure how much, how well levels even exist in the anime. I mean, they've been brought up before. But they sort of got abandoned after a while, still hear things like, this Pokémon's at a high level, and that's about all you'll get out of them, usually. Like, that Charizard's at a high level, or that Dragonite's at a high level. Like, what level? Like, it's just a high level, okay? How high? Like, high. Like, 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 you got a number? Like, no, it's just high. Like, that makes no sense, though. Like, how do you know what's high if you don't have a number? What's the highest number? Like, how does that even work? Like, it's probably not worth trying to figure it out. But in the School of Hard Knocks, they actually do bring up levels as an actual thing, and what what Pokemon learn what moves at what level. Um, I really can't see the tactical advantage of having Whirlwind here. And we don't have spikes yet, so there's no real use for it. And being able to switch in um, Mill Tank isn't going to really help me that much, because I still need to be able to drop an attack on it. Plus, I'll have to tank one from Clefairy in order to do it anyway. So yeah, I don't see the tactical advantage of using Whirlwind against Whitney. And since I'm heading back to the Pokemon Center anyway, I guess I'll just let Jigglypuff attack me. I mean, at worst, it'll put me to sleep, and I can, I'll have to switch over to Lady and to finish it. Uh, though I am crossing my fingers. Because I am nervous about taking on the cow. <sighs> All those memes, and yeah, Miltake can still be a problem if you don't prepare for it. Though this is a town where there's a lot of ready counters. Or you can just bring something like Geodude and you just tank the hits. Geodude's usually one of my favorite options if I'm doing a rock or ground run when it comes to this stuff, because it just shrugs off most of Miltake's attacks with. Relative ease. But I suppose you want to make it even better for yourself. You can always carry around Defense Girl. And pick up Rollout yourself. So you can charge up um, Rollout a little bit and then start slamming into it. Though you might want to bring an X Accuracy if that's the case to avoid missing. Because when that happens, it sucks. Rollout itself is not the most inaccurate of techniques, but it can miss occasionally. Which can just royally screw you. Well, we're gonna start off with Butterfree. I mean, who else are we gonna start off with, right? Well, let's do this. It's the moment of truth. Can we take down Whitney and the mighty Miltake? <sighs> with a couple of bugs. Ugh. Well, guess we'll find out. This stuff ain't gonna be a two on two battle, though. It's gonna be more like two on um four. Um, let's see. Alright, it's definitely be four on two, because we're the one with the advantage here. First things first, though, I'm putting to sleep this Clefairy. 
That way I can hopefully tear it apart without having to worry about its attacks. I suppose I could technically charge up Hardens from Militant, because I'm going to have to take at least one hit from um, Rollout, because Butterfree is too slow. Then again, if I do that, I might be able to uh, avoid some of the problems here. <sighs> okay. Oh, great, the mystery technique. Who knows what's going to be. <laughs> Sleep Powder. And it's going to keep thrashing about, yeah. Darn it. Wasn't expecting to take that much damage there. <sighs> Crap. Should've just went for the kill, I suppose, because I don't have that many potions on hand. <sighs> okay. Two um defense should help me out quite a bit. Now let's start trying to take down Glafrey with um confusion attacks. And hopefully if it gets back up it uses double slap. <sighs> In some ways I fear Clefairy just as much as Miltank, because that metronome is a complete crapshoot. It may or may not wreck your team depending on what drops. <sighs> Okay. Okay, try this again. Let's just take you out. Now it's time to take on Mill Tank. Okay. Um, Sleep Powder. Oh, and missed right off the bat, damn. Well, in that case, I'll try and do some work on it um, while she has it out right now. Hopefully it doesn't go into milk drink anytime soon. That would be a problem, too. Well, that might be one of the first things she does if she wakes up. I'm still not sure how that technique works. Does, like, Militank bend all the way over down to its udders or something? Oh darn, it might just sleep its way through this. I was prepared to drop into Spinarak and all that stuff to start hitting it with um, Scary Face to lower its speed, but... Shoot, if it's gonna let me kill it already, I'll kill it right now. I, I was prepared for a whole really complicated battle strategy, but... Apparently Sleep Powder gave me the win automatically, damn. For forget a complex strategy, let's just killed with confusion. But yeah, I was prepared to bring in Spinarak to drop Scary Face, then bring in Lay in the drop of Reflect Berry to start punching my way to victory. And maybe bring in um, Armage Hormageddon to blow itself up, but hey, if Sleep Powder works for you, it works, man. <laughs> I, I didn't think it would stay asleep that long. I figured it would wake up and I have to put it to sleep again after taking a hit, then to start doing the whole switch thing out after um, weakening it. But no, it worked, it worked out better in my favor. Thank you, Sleep Powder. I, I love it when you go off right. <sighs> well, that made my job easier. Oh, well, I guess Wormageddon didn't get to get have any fun tonight. Then again, it's only fun would have been blowing itself up. Yep. Well, the only thing I can think of to do with um the bagworm is have it self-destruct. Um, it's hard to think of much other uses Pineco really has besides, you know, detonating. Um, it can set up spikes, I guess, too, but we're not at a point where I can learn that yet. Maybe when I get to Claire, I'll have it, though. Well, let's pick up the squirt bottle. Oh, I gotta talk to the sister first. Jeez. Okay. Just because I'm better than Whitney doesn't mean it's gonna be easy taking down Pseudo Wudo. I mean, it is a rock type, and I got a bug team here. And I can't really use self destruct against it. I can use confusion and sleep powder, and that's gonna be my go to strategy effectively. 
Um, Ice Punch isn't going to work all that great because it's a rock type, not a ground type. So yeah, Sleep Powder and then confu Confusion Attacks to the end, I suppose. As soon as it doesn't knock me out with um, Rock Throw or something. Till next time, then. See ya.